All right, guys, so we're going to talk about instancing in this one, and I'm going to show you how you can use it to do really quick blackouts and have a lot of fun trying to figure out what you need when it comes to making game models. So, Blender real quick. And here in Blender, we're just going to get started. I'm going to throw in a drop-in character. Edit mode. This isn't a modeling tutorial necessarily, but some tips on instancing at least. So in a lot of my modular series videos, and, and I talked about creating walls, something like this, but really I would split them in half until they'd have offset face normally, right? And so uh, what we're going to do here instead, we need to for now, but the, um, the idea here is that you can instance. So Shift-D, most of us are aware of duplicates, but if you Alt-D, control, snap this over, you'll see we created a linked duplicate, which is the instance, okay? Now, if you've been doing any kind of 3D modeling, you used arrays, you used mirror modifiers, those are technically something like an instance as well. So just keep that in mind, that um, when you're able to reuse geometry as much as possible, it makes things a lot easier and faster, but sometimes it can be repetitious and become boring. Right? Just keep that in mind as we go through this process here. And so I'm just gonna create a column real quick. Sit here in the middle between these. Oh, okay. So the modular series, by the way, I, I talked about doing more granular stuff and kind of bigger structures, but you can always go bigger if you need to. It's just that's kind of like the rule of 3D modeling is do whatever's uh, going to work for you as fast as possible to fill space, especially for like game art, game levels, things. So if I wanted to just do this column up to here, maybe I do another cube. Okay, go ahead and scale this in. Probably extend this out. Direction. It's extruding a little weird and it's not grid snapping, so we're going to turn on grid snap. That, control X. Yeah, okay. So we can start making pretty much walls and things like here. Yeah, you know, a couple pieces to play with here. Okay. This that column's a little too large, so I'm gonna scale it in. S shift Z. So of course we can turn these kinds of things into I beam. I did do this and bevel. E extrude manifold. I'm gonna try this with the mesh machine. Just basically a mirror with a bisect on it. Destructive, so it's, there's no modifier. All right. And so I can go through this process here and figure out what it is I'm gonna need through this whole process. Get rid of things I don't need. So I can start making little modular pieces, parts, and components as uh, as needed. Right, and so this is where things get interesting because the way I learned a 3D model is you didn't have a lot of like asset management stuff going on at the time. So naming this stuff right now could be useful, but honestly, I don't know what I need yet. I don't know what I'm gonna keep, what I'm gonna delete. So I'm gonna instance it all over over here, get rid of just the excess, blow it apart if needed. Right, so now we can kind of see which pieces we have created here. Okay, and so this is just going to allow us to keep using everything over here as its own little parts and pieces so we can lay out more interesting designs and concepts and see uh, what we're going to end up with at some point, right? How it would look if you were to put it all together. Think of this as like a temporary set dress just to kind of validate everything you're creating, right? Okay, so probably getting a little bit confused about now why instancing is so good. It's because in Blender, there's the asset browser, as good as it is, it doesn't work real well for rapid iteration. If you start planning things out and organizing them very carefully, it's not too bad, but it's going to slow you down when you're just trying to come up with these basic blocked out components, generally speaking, because you might need you know, just an extra type of column like this, right? So now we got another kit piece. 
And so instead of like finding these by name and trying to pick everything by name later on, because they're all separated and they're linked, we can now just grab them basically. We can create a new collection, hit M, create a new collection. I got an asset or collections manager add on enabled. But basically, create a collection, these are your assets. Right? And then move them all to that. And uh, meanwhile, these ones over here, we can move those to the collection. So they're nice and organized. Then. But they're still instant. All right, so uh, let's say one of these here, I'm going to duplicate it. And I want to create like a second variation of this one where I want like a really narrow window in it, right? So I'm just going to grab those two faces, control E, bridge edge loops. Okay. And so if I want to take one of these later, swap it for this one, you can actually do this by instancing this to this, right? So we select, select, this is now the active element. Control L, link object data, bam. You'll see it swaps it out like that, right? And so this is dependent on the origin point quite a bit or the rotation and scale of the object, not so necessarily so much the placement, but the origin point placement is also important. These were matching basically, right? So we didn't have anything shift out of place. If this origin point was all messed up over here when we did that, we'd end up with something like this. Not very good, but so you need to think about your origin point placement. Now you're going to utilize it while you're blocking out these kinds of components. Now, this is why it's all throwaway, because before you go ahead and start exporting something like this to a game engine, you're going to want to probably configure that origin point into the corners, if possible, of the objects. They tend to work better if you try to scale something, if it's at like the extents of the, uh, maybe like the middle right or the back right or thing, somewhere over there. So, and I have to do that before you export, because if you start using these in a game engine, creating a level, and then you realize your origin point's messed up later on, so you try to fix it, everything's going to get messed up, basically. And that'll happen here in Blender a little bit, too. So generally, rule of thumb is just as you're creating little segments like this, you're going to um, go ahead and go through these. Just make sure your origin points are exactly how you want them before you start uh, doing the instant. Okay, so we have a wall. We have something of a ceiling started. Let's make another little piece of a ceiling right here at the top. Okay, and so we can make two different ceilings here if we wanted to. I'm going to just make this a square real quick. You see that origin points over there? I don't want that just yet. I want it bottom center. It should be on the grid, hopefully. If not, Line it up real quick. We got that one. This is going to be a second one. This one has to be a little bit different because we have a little overhang here. Right? So now we can take both of these into edit mode, actually. Go and inset these. Hit control, oh, click. And then inset and hold control. Bring them up a little bit like that. Right, so you can see we got two different roof components, one for the wall, one for the center here. So we can run this along the wall here, and eventually we'll make a corner unit probably. But we'll have like our center filler as well. Have all these little pieces. And we can uh, stretch out like so. All right, this all has to be destructive, unfortunately. Place that one over there. Both of those now. But it has to be destructive because if you did something like uh, like say this wall here, it's used here and here. Turn on box cutter and I just did a boolean real quick. You'll see that well, it doesn't update over there because this has got a modifier for it. And also the boolean cutting shape is over here. So you'd actually have to duplicate that as well and put it over there, which kind of you can't do. Not really. So you can apply the boolean and it will take effect over there. Uh, but it's going to ask you whether you want to break the instance or if you want to um, apply it to all objects. You can do all objects. And it works just like so. Uh, box cutter in particular, if you use the smart apply feature, it doesn't ask. It does. So that's kind of nice. But generally speaking, you don't want to use um, modifiers if possible. You can't really do groups. Like you kind of can, but it becomes a little bit frustrating to use. But once again, this is throwaway mesh. This is just a test to verify if your modular pieces will work. And so you kind of start laying them out like so. 
also there's performance considerations you need to take into account like for example right now this is maybe like the interior side this is the exterior side what you see we got some z fighting going on maybe not ideal but um we want we might want to separate these things later on depending on what we're working on you can see over here on this little block out section this is made virtually the same way as we were just doing right there and you can see just larger pieces larger components going up um, but everything here at some point will likely little sections you may likely separate these uh, or combine these later on into different um, parts and pieces like larger modular pieces perhaps but also interior and exterior and so when i was showing all those modular series videos i was saying that you probably need to uh, cut things in half like this you might end up with both where you have a unit that is interior and exterior but you might also have ones that are just interior or ones that are just exterior this comes into play with um, larger structures specifically so like this this hangar area could potentially end up benefiting from something like that but uh, something like this building over here this is you know hundreds and hundreds of different little modular pieces and so when we go inside of it you'll see it has interior and exterior and the interior is a little bit more defined here this is a lot of wasted uh, performance basically because it's rendering the exterior the back side of the exterior there right so the interior wall but then it's also doing the interior over there in the back and then the exterior over there as well it's also going all the way to the top as one big giant piece right and so that's going to have a problem with culling there's no way that when it's off camera it will cull it because it still sees it in the view here and it sees it all the way up so you can start to split up buildings into uh, specifically like mid sections that will be lower poly perhaps just exterior pieces it may even just use a material on it that looks like windows or whatever the case but it'll probably be a lot lower poly than it would be at the base where you can use more individual modular pieces, perhaps save a little bit of performance there you also got to consider that you got to lot these things at some point uh, we're not exactly there with the block out portion of this but uh, you will eventually probably have to lot a bunch of things as well and so basically what's going to end up happening is you test it here you can bring it into the game engine real quick uh, set some collision up for it just to make sure the proportions are right your characters can run in and out of it real quick uh, but once you're kind of happy with the metrics in the unit and everything else you can go ahead and you can actually kind of refine these things and set them up a little bit more appropriately or proper the thing is is you're going to end up with like different units that are supposed to be very similar um, so you might like uv map and texture this one and then from this one try to create the uh, game ready model of this one so you're going to have to think about how you uh, finish these up a little bit later on as well usually not too bad but something you do want to consider right so you might want to go through like do your bevels and things like that and then you can have a lot that goes back down to what we basically just had something real simple like that at some point right so performance considerations are going to play a huge role in what you're creating also just because i'm showing how to do these smaller little modular units like this doesn't mean you can't go super large with things okay so if you're using trim sheets or seamless textures or even uh, material layer blending you, you can virtually take these sizes and bump them up to the whole size of a building so maybe you don't do just individual sections of a wall maybe you could do like a whole corner of a building right and then but the reason i showed all the granular stuff inside of um in the modular series is because eventually you might be able to decorate these individually uh differently where you have you know different baseboards and so you'd just be making smaller modular units that you can pretty much uh, combine to it or you can set up a prefab or something if you really wanted to or you can have like different little pieces like this maybe this wall at some point it's some damage in it you might UV map it, create another variation of it, and now you could set up something like uh, some drywall damage, something like that, right? So you can do these kinds of things relatively quick, like add additional elements. So these will probably get cold out at some point, additional elements, like boards inside of it and stuff. Let's see where this is. Depends on your game engine as well and how you're going to do things. They have their own 
performance kind of setups that work better for them than others. You'll want to measure it with like frames per second and draw balls and that fun stuff. Use the stats and GPU profilers if possible. So instead of making a bunch of boards here, we can make like one board and um, could even potentially instance this out at some point. Shift R. Right. If you ever need to break instances, press Control A and apply scale. Usually that works pretty well. You'll see that Control A apply scale. These were instant. See, it'll break it. Make it a new. Um, so that's how you would do that. Otherwise, you got to go to relationships, make single user objects and data. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's very destructive. It's just a quick, easy way of figuring out what you need, what you don't need. Laying out some parts and pieces in their most basic forms. Okay, like you're establishing the footprint of the modular piece, not trying to make necessarily art like I'm doing right now. Um, but I wanted to do that real quick just to give you an idea because it has the same origin point, right? We can do that, right? And so this is what you'll end up doing in the game engine at some point, potentially, or before you export a whole section out you'll end up doing something like that as well. Okay, so you can swap little parts and pieces, change arrangements and you know, generate more or less whole sections of buildings and rooms and everything. Like so you could say like, this here is like a quarter of a hangar. I might make another section that's just like the run of the hangar. Like, so this might be a corner. There might be like a side here. Um, and then there might be like a center section I wanna create. And then I should be able to, if I make this symmetrical enough, should be able to rotate this out and spin it around in a big loop so it becomes a whole building with a center section right and then i can make it as long as i want with these additional run element um, and then pile in the center sections stuff like that so that's how you'd be able to figure all this kind of stuff out super fast when you're um, just getting initially started doing blockouts and also keep in mind um, even though it's a lot of fun to just do these blockouts on really flat surfaces a lot of things in real life, they're not on flat surfaces. So you sculpt some terrain and play around with it going up and down in elevation as well. See how you can um, run the walls into and out of um, terrain changes if possible. It's gonna help you out quite a bit. And just do this a number of different times over and over. Get some practice just blocking out. And then before you know it, you'll, you'll start to understand like how you can turn a really simple kit, like this whole hanger is made out of just these different little pieces, right? And this little center column is literally this little side piece as well. And it's just mirrored out. So I can make these little additional elements from pre-existing pieces as well. Um, start to lay it all out like so. Like stairs can just be a big solid piece like this. It doesn't necessarily have to be modular with every step. Nothing wrong with doing it this way either. So you can try to make every step modular, but it may or may not work out too well for you at the end of the day. Technically, these are kind of being used, but they're using arrays for these ones. So you can do that technically, and it's still more or less mod. Kind of the big. Also, if there's an unplayable area like this building over here, this is an unplayable area. You can model that whole section and just export it as just one big model. It doesn't really need to be broken down whatsoever. If you're not trying to like change configurations of a building and things like that. Not really required but it works pretty well especially for interiors to um, be able to change up the designs of the buildings inside or the layouts so you can have tweak the gameplay and everything else that you're trying to uh, focus on right so anyways that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed this one and i'll check you out in the next one all right take care